what is the difference between the mystic of today and the mystic of yesterday? Perhaps. <laughs> However, today is a new day. We're in a different era. In the past, a mystic would usually devote everything of their life into a particular spiritual or religious pathway. And through working within that pathway and this like lifetime devotion would come into the space of experiencing oneness. And that is one of the key things of being a mystic. What does it require to be a mystic? Is actually quite simple. <laughs> you have to have a mystical experience. If you're having mystical experiences, you are a mystic because you are tapped in and connecting. The experience of the oneness and union with that living source by whatever name Christ, Wonderful One, God, Universe, in any measure. It transforms the consciousness into particular space of how we live, see, and interact. A mystic walks between two worlds, both the outer world and the inner world. And any experience of oneness is an experience of oneness of any kind. Have you ever looked into a person's eyes and felt not only such connection, but a reflection of yourself in that person? Have you ever been so still in nature that you could almost feel and hear the living things breathing and communicating with each other? Had such oneness with that. Have you ever been in a crowd of people and looked out, and instead of just seeing the physical forms, the shapes and sizes and colors of how they show up, seeing the angelic spirit of God shining through each person in a unique way? Have you ever, in the stillness of your own mind, watched the birthing of the universe and creation unfolding on the screen in the blackness as a movie being shared with you. These are just different types of oneness with different aspects of the one. And each one of these experiences, and there's so many more, I'm just using a few different examples lead us into this space of knowing the one within, which is the one of all that is. And from that space of knowing, a mystic is born. And it's still you. We don't lose the parts of ourselves, except for the parts of ourselves that aren't willing to surrender into the alignment with the high self, the wonderful one. And that surrender is a mark of a mystic. It's a desire above all things to know that oneness, to know the union of the spirit within with the temporary personality self, so that that can be the guiding force in all things within our experience. And so a mystic yearns for that. They reach for that. They go into stillness, opening to that, responding, calling it forth, invoking, calling to the presence to come into the mind, to come into the body, to come into the heart, to fill the self. Because 
The mystic knows that that is the most valuable thing in life beyond any of the rest of it. Now in today, today's mystic, the collective consciousness is more advanced further along than it has been through previous parts of our history. I would say the veil is thinner, connection is easier, our collective vibration is rising. You might not believe it, depending on what sources you're listening to, but it's true. We are ascending collectively as a species and a planet. And so it no longer takes giving the entirety of oneself and one's entire life into following some religious or spiritual path to be able to have these types of mystical experiences, to tap into the union and the oneness with the one. And however that shows up for you, that is walking between the two worlds. A mystic knows the truth of the statement, I'm of the world, in the world, but not of the world. Because there's a relationship that's present. It's present for all of us. And yet for the one who gives it attention, who makes space and time for it, who opens the heart to know that inner relationship, to travel through that inner world and explore the same way as you might go on a hike and explore the outer world. It opens up. It's always there. I've been having more experiences personally. Uh, and not just those other ones. <laughs> From the examples. And I'm not trying to convince you I'm a mystic. In fact, I'd rather hope I can convince you you're a mystic. But I've been practicing more and more with tuning in and listening, and most especially asking a question. And a lot of the times, the question isn't even really much of a question, except for what do I do? Like, tell me, show me. I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to give up my conscious ego control of driving my own life. Because uh, in some way, I'll just be, I don't know that I'm doing that great of a job. I'm probably my own worst critic. Um, and critical was a topic here recently. But I know that so much more is possible if I can get out of my own way of being so committed to making the choices and decisions and unconsciously following the patterns and the habits that are just ingrained and operating unconsciously in that way. So I've been calling it in and saying, I'm come into my mind, guide me, tell me. And in some way, I've always had some sort of subconscious connection to hearing the voice of spirit. And anyone who has had any mystical experience and opened up any sense of mysticism within themselves has that connection. It's not enough. I've spent a lot of life kind of ignoring it, not really wanting to do the things that we're saying were good for me because I enjoy doing these other things. And they haven't necessarily proven out over time to be for my best benefit. So I'm ready to surrender. And I even watched like a couple of days ago where Spirit was telling me to go and do this set of exercises that I have. And I know we're going to be good for something in my body, but I have been putting it off. It told me to go do it. And in the moment, sitting in my favorite chair, looking out over the, over the reservoir, and this enjoy, I'm like, I don't really want to. <laughs> and I came back again, do this. It will help you heal that. And then this other voice came in. 
I don't like being told what to do. I was shocked because I watched this happen. And I know that one of these voices will take me into further union, greater presence, a knowing of mystical realities. And the other one is just going to lead me to eventually death and disconnection. It's the Pharisee that wants to stand in the door and won't walk through. And the other part of me is calling. Wake up, mystic. Come forth. Because the one that leads us is always there when we just open to listen, ask, follow, knock, the door will open. <laughs>